Hey, what's up, YouTube? Dub K Dad. I want to show you guys what my hero build and how it would look if I were attending YCS Dallas. Um, starting off, two effect Valor, Gores, three Elemental Hero Neos Alias, Stratos, one Bubble Man, two Evocator Chevalier, two Duality, two Ecall, Rhoda, two Chalice, two Lance, three Miracle Fusion, three Gemini Spark, Heavy Storm. Monster Reborn, Dark Hole, Super Poly, Compulsory, Starlight, Solemn Judgment, Two Solemn Warning, Two Hero Blasts, Two Dimensional Prison, and Two Torrential Tribute. My extra board, Cataster, Stardust, Mistworm, uh, Zero, Two Nova Master, Gaia, Tornado, Two Shining, Dragon Knight, Draco Ekest, Two Blade Armor, Number 39, and Chaos 39. My side deck. Two MST, a second Super Poly, two Shadow Mirror, two Bottomless, two Skill Drain, two Crow, two King Tiger, and two Snowman Eater. All right. Now you guys notice right off the bat that I've relegated my Skill Drains to the side deck, and you know it's I ran Skill Drain in my main build, and I ran you know there's no Thunder King in the main board. I ran those cards. And it just seems like Skill Drain, yes, is an amazing card, but I just don't see it necessary. This deck is really hyped right now, and the way the deck is constructed, it should auto-beat the mirror match. Reason being, people have two dead cards against you. Skill Drain is dead against your board, against your deck. And the other hyped up deck going into this event is Dark World. Again, Skill Drain is pretty much dead in that matchup. That only leaves Insectors and Windups. I left out Dino Rabbit because Dino Rabbit runs three 1900 beaters, vanilla beaters, uh, plus any number of Thunder Kings, and they doesn't afraid of Skill Drain. You can ask anybody who play on a competitive scene if they side their Skill Drains out in a Dino Rabbit matchup and they say, yeah, because the deck has just as much as removal as I do. Their guys are big, and Skill Drain doesn't do much. Rabbit banishes itself, unaffected by Skill Drain. Then they get two 1900 beaters to run over my aliases. Or they just go into a big-ass succeed and run over my alias, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that only leaves you know, the rogue matchups, windups, and insectors. If you have Skill Drain in the main board... And you've been to an event of regional and locals, playtesting or whatever. You already know that they run a lot of outs to your skill drain anyway. So I would rather affect Valor than run their ass over the next turn. I can forbid Chalice if necessary. Um, run their ass over next turn. Um, Miracle Fusion. Just, you know, just run their asses, their little asses over. And then game two, sideboard. You know they're going to bring in the decrees, so that's why the MSTs are there. And that makes, this keeps your Shadow Mirrors live. If you want, you can side the skill drains. And that's why they're there. If, if, I, so, if I feel that they just have way too much uh, destruction and Shadow Prison Mirror is not going to be enough, then skill drain comes in. But more importantly, this is going to be Shadow Mirror, the MSTs, and the King Tigers. That also goes for... The wind-up matchup, the King Tigers come in, uh, the Snowman Eaters come in because they're going to bring in Thunder Kings and more beatdown type monsters, um, more stun type monsters, and Snowman Eater handles that. Um, Skill Drain also works really good against wind-ups, and that's pretty much the only matchup that you're going to get in with, with Skill Drain. Um, the Shining people play the Shining, I think. You know, as their go-to synchro when they get their first Miracle Fusion. You know, so they can immediately get their plus. Knowing that they run two other Miracle Fusion and potentially a Super Poly to go into their Shining later. I run the two Evocator Chevalier because I know I can get draw. I can draw into more cards. I don't want more monsters in my hand. I want more outs in my hand. So I generally go into Nova Master as soon as possible. And so I can run over their Thunder Kings, run over their Evolzars, um, you know, run over their dudes 
and start drawing more outs. And then I can sit on it and then when they clear it, hopefully I've drawn into my more Miracle Fusions, um, you know, my other aliases, my other evocator. Then I can start sparking them and then do it all over again. Uh, so that's the way I look at it. Yes, I know that shining is important for getting back your dues removed from play. But you run three Miracle Fusion and you go into him later. That's just how I play the deck. And it's been very successful for me playing it that style. And um, I think I'm going to continue to play it that way. Um, now, notably gone from my build you guys seen earlier is I'm not running Supervise. I'm not running Book of Moon. Book of Moon, in my opinion, is an inherent neg one. Yes, it breaks up plays. But if you can't do anything about the play you just broke up, then it was pointless and a neg one. Compulsory is almost always a one-for-one one if you use it correctly. And I say that because um, if they had the normal summon, two monsters to go into an exceed or synchro, you bounce it, you got a plus one. If they go tour guide and a sangin, you bounce their sangin or you bounce their tour bus that they brought up tour guide. And now they have a helpless tour guide out there and you can start getting pluses off of that. Uh, the only thing you really don't want to compulse is an insector. But worst case scenarios, I mean, you can do that. And then, especially if you didn't draw into your warning yet, or your veilers, or your chalices. So I just feel that it's an all-around good card. Um, you can use it with your own guys. I've used it to bounce my Stratos to my hand, resummon it when I had a Shining, a Starlight Road, and um, a Neos Alias on a board to pop two cards. So, you know, it, you could do stupid little random ass tricks like that. And, um, you know, it can put in work. Let me know what you guys think. I mean, I, I, ho I felt that I have explained everything. You know, Diddy Crow, Dark World matchup, random frog matchup. Um, if you're feeling lucky, you can hit the Hornets. Um, this puts in work against um, Insectors to some degree. Some degree puts in serious work against wind-ups. Snowman Eater for the mirror match, for any kind of rogue attack, attack, attack type deck. And um, I just feel that this deck is very well balanced. It doesn't rely on skill drain. Um, most people do not see gores coming because they feel you run way too many back road to have gores. I mean, they're already confused enough when you drop a Valor on them. Then when you drop gores, you know, you know they kind of perk up in their seat and they start getting super serious with you. All right, it's Dub K Dad, Team DKF. Please comment down below. Um, please like this if you uh, feel that this deck would really have potential at YCS Dallas. And if you're going and you're running heroes, let me know if you would consider converting to my build. All right, guys. Peace.